Okay, this is chapter 3, B3, problem number 11. Directions are our solve for x. Okay, so we have a linear equation. We're going to solve for x here. And I see that I have fractions in my equation. So anytime there's fractions in my equation, I want to multiply every term, every number by the least common denominator. If I do this, I won't have fractions anymore. It'll clear my problem with fractions. Okay, so what I want to do is multiply everything by the least common denominator. The first thing I have to do is find the least common denominator. I see uh, my denominators are 8, 6, and 4. I need to find the smallest number that goes in, 8, 6, and 4, and that should be uh, 24. 8 will go into 24 three times, 6 will go into 24 four times, and 4 will go into 24 six times, right? Um, so after I decide my least common denominator is 24, then I multiply everything by 24, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and write that in the next step. I'm going to write it as a fraction so it's easier to multiply. Okay, you notice here I want to multiply the 24 by 1 6. So I know it's going to be a negative result. That's something I always want to keep in mind. Um, so what I'm going to do is just going to keep my negative sign here, multiply 24 by 1, 6. Really what I did is kind of shifted my negative over, but I know in the end it's going to be a negative result. 24 times negative 1, 6, negative number. Okay? Same thing over here. So once I set that up then, I'm going to have, I should, something to think about, I should have a positive, a negative, and negative, a positive. So I'm multiplying by a positive number, so I'm going to keep the, the same signs I had to start with, right? So, so to cancel, 881, 24, three times. Over here, 6 and 6 once, and 24, four times, four times, negative 4 and 1, negative 4. Uh, over here, 6 and 6, 1 to the 24, 4 times, negative 4 times 5, negative 20, and then my last multiplication part, 4 to 4, 1 to the 24, 6 times, so I'm going to get 6 times 9, I'm going to get 54. Okay, so, right, now I've eliminated my problem with fractions, that was the goal. I now have a linear equation with no fractions, so this is a little easier to work with. Uh, the goal is to get my x's on one side, call the numbers on the other, and then divide by the coefficient of x. So I have one of two options. I could add the 4x to both sides and eliminate it from the left side, or I could subtract 54x from both sides, eliminate it from the right. I'm going to choose to add 4x. Doesn't matter. In the end, you get the same result. Okay, so negative 4x plus 4x is 0. Is it with 21 equals negative 20 plus 58x if I add those together? Okay, and now I can get my number term over here. And I do that by adding 20 to both sides. And that's going to get rid of it on the right side. And now 21 and 20 is 41. I'm left with 41 equals. 58x. Now that's a little hard to see, so I'm going to rewrite it up here. Erase this. Okay, so now I have one step from my answer. 41 equals 58x. I'm going to rewrite that. Okay, and now solve that. One step from my solution. All I have to do is divide by the coefficient of x. My last step. I get x equals 41 over 58, and I try and see if I can uh, divide some number into both of those numbers. So I see, can I reduce that fraction is what I'm trying to do. Can I reduce 41 over 58? Is there a number that goes into 41 58? I can try to divide it by 3, um, maybe by 7. Uh, just, just see if it can reduce, and if it can't, well, then I can reduce. In this case, it's not going to reduce. So that's my final answer, 41 over 58, and I'm done. Okay, so keep, keep on doing your homework. Remember, you got to do your homework in order to pass this course.